of God. Because in the house of God, there were many vessels in the temple that the skilled craftsmen had made to glorify God. And they were taken away down to Babylon. This is why God judged them. Because they took the sacred vessels and they began to drink out of them. And to praise the God of silver and the God of gold. And there was a writing on the wall because they trespassed with the sacred vessels. Today, we are God's vessels. We're told that we are the temple of the Lord. And the Spirit of God lives in us. And the plan of Satan is to take our vessels away. Not for the glory of God, but for sin. But when we come to Jesus, we commit our lives to Him. And He lives in us. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the Christ that lives in me. We thank God today, but our God is the restorer. Amen. The years that the conquer world has eaten, God will restore. And so, even though the fellowship with God was broken in Eden with Adam, a prophecy was given. The Lord said to the serpent, You will bruise the heels of the seed of the woman, but he will bruise your head. That was the first messianic prophecy in Genesis. It told about the coming of the Lord Jesus. What Satan had destroyed, Jesus would come to restore. Amen. And so, it is with Israel also. That the temple that the Babylonians had destroyed, God was about to restore. When Jesus came, he was willing to come. The word of God said, in the volume of thy book, it is written of me, that is in Hebrew. Behold, I have come to do thy will, O God. The first Adam came. But thank God for Jesus, the quickening spirit. The first Adam was a living soul. But the second Adam, Jesus Christ, was a quickening spirit. So Jesus came and brought restoration. To deliver man from sin. To set the captive free. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There's a song that we sing. Oh, the love that drew salvation's plan. Oh, the grace that brought it down to man. Oh, the mighty God that God did span at Calvary. I know the songwriter said, if that isn't lost, then the ocean is dry. There is no star in the sky. And the sparrow can't fly. He left the splendors of heaven. Knowing his destiny. To the lonely hill of Golgotha. There to lay down his life for me. Jesus is coming to this earth. Was the labor of love. For the souls of mankind. When, he, when they pierced his forehead, they put a crown of thorn upon him. They spat upon him. They put a sword to his side. They gave him vinegar to drink. And he looked upon them and he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do because of his love to redeem. So any work for God is a labor of love. And so, as we look in Nehemiah, we see here, this man called Nehemiah was employed in Babylon, in the king's palace. He was the cupbearer. And you know, the cupbearer was a trusted servant. Because the king could be poisoned by his enemies. So this cupbearer was the one 
who would taste his wine to make sure that it was okay. But Nehemiah, while he was in the employment of the king, he inquired what was happening down in Israel. Remember I told you that Cyrus gave the command that they should go back to rebuild the temple. And so Zerubbabel, this is the same Zerubbabel in Zechariah that said, It's not by my or by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. Zerubbabel led the first set of captives back down to Babylon to rebuild. But while they were building, there were some people who wanted the work of God to stop. Sanballat and Tobiah, these are the enemies. So the work that was being done by Zerubbabel to build the temple, it stopped for a while. Because they said to the king, this was after Cyrus died, they said, listen, these people are rebellious people. And when they build their temple, they are not going to pay tribute to the king anymore. So the work should be stopped. The king looked up some records and he saw there that the Jews had rebelled against the Babylonians and so they stopped the work. But let me tell you something, Satan may give us a setback, but the setback is just temporary. Amen. And when we have a setback, it is for a greater glory. Amen. So sometimes when we are laboring in the work of God, Pastor, we may have some setbacks, but it's just for God to lift us higher. Amen. So there was a setback in the work. But later on, when Darius became king, and the Jews decided to take up the building of the temple again, and some persons said, no, you can't build. They said, let's ask the king. And the king checked back the records again and saw where Cyrus had given the commandment for them to build. And he told them to start building again. And at that time, Ezra, the priest, went down. And Ezra fasted and prayed for three days and asked God for strength. And so the temple was finished and was again available for worship of God. But salvation is free. It's a gift of God. It's great. But when we accept Jesus as our Savior, we also have to be sanctified. And that is a process. And so the rebuilding work was a process. And God uses different people at different times. Zerubbabel went first to help to build back the temple. When there were some difficulties, Ezra went down with another group to have the work started again. When that was completed, there was still more to be done. Amen. You know, in Jamaica there is a little song that the children sing in Sunday school. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. He made the moon and the sun and the stars and Jupiter and Mars, but he's still working on me. And God is still working on us today to make us what we ought to be. It doesn't happen all at once. It's a process. And so you see how much the children of God have to go through coming from captivity in order to get back to the place where they ought to be. And this is symbolic of our journey from sin into grace, into sanctification, and finally into glorification. The word said we shall, when he shall come, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. So, in this passage now, we have come a long way from Zerubbabel and Ezra and the temple being built. So the temple was built and dedicated. But you know, when you build your altar of worship, 
It needs protection.